In this video I'm going to take a uh, closer look at inverse trig functions just to ward off maybe a possible problem that might occur when you start working with the law of sines. So in essence this is really part one where I'm going to address this inverse trig functions. I'll make a second part, um, second video that will then go, go right into the law of sines. What we need to do is we do need to take a closer look at these inverse trig functions before doing this law of sines. So often when students are trying to find inverse trig functions, the first thing they do is they grab their calculator and they plug it in and whatever value they get, then they just assume that that's right, it's the only answer and they're good and they go from there. That will possibly um, create some problems when working with this law of signs. So in this first example here, I want to take a look at what's going to happen. All right, Let's say that um, it tells you to find a theta in the interval from 0 to 180 degrees. All right, and what they're wanting is they want you to find sine theta equal to one half. All right, so like I said, the first thing that people generally do is they use the inverse sine button on their calculator. So the little sine with that little negative one up there, which is really the inverse symbol. All right, they're going to plug that into their calculator. All right, and get this, and it's going to return a value of theta equaling 30 degrees. Okay, and that is right, that is correct. All right, so if I consider my interval from 0 to 180 degrees, so basically a half circle here, I'll attempt to draw a half circle right here, all right, at 30 degrees, okay, which would be just rough estimate here, right there, all right, on a unit circle, the coordinates that go along with that point are square root of 3 over 2 and then a one-half, all right? And as you recall on your unit circle, the first value in the order pair is your cosine, second one is sine. So sine of 30 is one-half. But then the question is, all right, that's the only value that your calculator is going to return. The question is, is there any place else along this semicircle in between 0 and 180 degrees that you will have another sine that is a half? Okay, or a second coordinate? And the answer to that is yes, there is, because that unit circle is symmetrical. All right, so over here, all right, not drawn very well, but over there, at exactly 150 degrees, I will have a negative square root of 3 over 2, because I'm going left, negative, and then up 1 half, to that point right there. So right there, sine is one half again. So another theta is 150 degrees. So you've got two possible choices. All right, once we start working with this law of sines, you're going to be able to maybe have to do deal with both of them or maybe be able to throw one out because we're dealing with triangles and when you add up your angles, you're over 180 degrees, so you can throw it out. But regardless, you need to realize when you do get to working out the math and you're using, you need to find the inverse of one of your trig functions. You've got to think about that unit circle and think if there's a second possibility. Okay, now doing that same type of scenario in the second example, it says find a theta in the interval from 0 to 360. Okay, so I'm thinking all the way around my circle here. They want me to find cosine theta equals 1 half. So this time I'm looking for a one-half in the first spot along that unit circle. All right, now let's go ahead and draw, because I'm only going to need half circle here. Let's see if I can draw some more half circle there. Okay, so again, probably your first thing that students are going to do is they're going to grab their calculator. They will use that inverse cosine button on their calculator, and what's going to happen is it's going to return a value of 60 degrees, okay, which that is true. That is a legit thing. All right, rough here in my rough estimate here of in the first quadrant. All right, there would be 60 degrees. All right, the ordered pair is a one half and then a square root of three over two from your unit circle, remembering that the first coordinate is cosine. Okay, now the question is is there any place else going all the way around? that I can find a positive one-half. All right, well, obviously it can't be here or here because both your first coordinates would have to be negative. So we're looking down here in this fourth quadrant. And there is because, again, this is symmetrical going around there. If I start and go all the way around, 
it's going to be 300 degrees that will have the exact same ordered pair. A one half and a negative square root of three over two. Okay, so then a second answer would be theta is equal to 300 degrees. Okay. This is going to be a very, very important concept when you start dealing with that law of signs and you have to, in your work, come up with the inverse values. All right. You've got to check all of your different possibilities. So just a short little um, video to introduce the inverse of trig functions and to realize that re there really is more to just hitting that button on the calculator. Um, if the information was helpful, uh, be sure and give me a thumbs up, share with your friends, leave a positive comment. I'd love to chat with you. Thanks.